the Shockwave Technologies blade. Let's check it out. The AR-15 pistol has become very popular over the past few years, and one of the things that really increased that popularity was the SIG arm brace. Uh, being able to have another point for your cheek, a little more comfortable, uh, and because it was approved by the ATF, these really sold well. Uh, after the ATF kind of pointed out the regulation that you can't shoulder these, uh, you know, this really was thick, fat, and I was really looking for something a little less cumbersome. I mean, I've got this really small AR pistol. I wanted something lightweight. And so today we're going to take a look at the Shockwave Technologies Blade. Now, I have heard so much about these. I've got a friend of mine that has five of these. Uh, and, you know, once I tried this out and shot with it, uh, there was no going back. And so we're going to take a look at the Shockwave Technologies Blade and also the CAC adapter. Uh, and this can be adjusted anywhere on your buffer tube. This is a great combination for this really small package. And of course, I've got this big Magpul D60 drum on here, uh, you know, but it does give you a lot of firepower. Any rifle under a 16 inch barrel or a shotgun under 18 inch barrel uh, becomes what they call the SBR and it's regulated under the National Firearms Act or the NFA. Uh, to have a rifle barrel shorter than 16 inches, you've got to send in paperwork, you've got to have a background check, you've got to be approved, you've got to pay a $200 tax stamp, and probably one of the biggest things is you have to wait sometimes nine months to a year before the tax stamp gets back and you have approval. Uh, another thing is those are restricted for going across state lines. You have to get approval before you can even go across state lines. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why the AR pistol became very popular and specifically the pistol brace. Uh, one of the things though that the ATF is very clear about is that you can't put a pistol brace on here and then shoulder it according to regulations. You can be prosecuted. And what that means is you're going around the NFA regulations, the $200 tax stamp, to have your own SBR, short barrel rifle, without all the regulations and paperwork. Um, and so that's one of the things about this. This is designed as a brace alone. Uh, it can fit up next to your arm. It can fit up to your cheek. It does give you an extra point of reference and one of the reasons why it's just really been so popular. And guys, I want to warn you that putting this brace against your shoulder and using it as a stock is against the law according to the NFA and the ATF. Uh, it's best just to keep this off your shoulder, but yet it really makes this a handy package and again gives you three points that you can put it on your cheek, you've got your hand for your hand guard, and then you've got your grip. So it can be a very stable platform. Man, I keep hearing great things about the Shockwave Technologies Blade. And one of the big things immediately is that it weighs 5 ounces, whereas your old SIG arm brace weighs 12 ounces. Plus, it's, you know, rubber and just... I mean, these have been great for a long time, but they are bulky. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And uh, this kind of got the, the ball rolling, so I'm not going to give these guys too hard of a time because this has been a great stand-in. So I ordered the Shockwave Technologies Blade from Primary Arms. I thought I was going to put it on a Rock River buffer tube, but it just didn't fit. Uh, the buffer tube's thicker, uh, it's made a little bit heavier, and so after that I ordered uh, one of the CAC Industries uh, buffer tubes. And these guys are kind of working together, um, and you know this does mate, of course, with your standard uh, you know, with your end plate for your mil spec end plate, and it has a castle nut, and with the groove right here, so it's going to lock into place again and help to keep it from turning. So you have 12 different positions, 
and then you have this small little set screw that locks it into place. So you don't have to worry about the thing turning and that's one of the problems even with the uh, SIG arm braces. It could turn and that's really a problem. Now they sell these in different kits. You can get the whole kit together or you can order just a tube or you can order just a blade. So a lot of different configurations. Uh, this does come in a number of colors. It comes in the black, it comes in FDE, gray, and OD. This is made from a reinforced glass polymer. It's a high impact a polymer. It is solid. I mean, it is rock solid. Uh, and so it shouldn't have any problems. I was looking at a lot of different reviews on these and all I was seeing was five star after five star. Uh, so there's a, a, this has been really well accepted. This, to me, as far as a brace goes, is far superior than the SIG. I mean, you don't have to wrap it around your arm. And uh, we'll demonstrate it at the range, and I'll show you how it works. Uh, but it's much more user-friendly for one-handed, or if you're going to rest this up on your cheek. It's not so bulky. Now, to give you a little demonstration of what this really was designed to do is we're going to fire a few rounds. Uh, one-handed is really the way this is supposed to be fired. And when you extend your arm, the blade rests on the inside of your arm. It does. It rests on that inside of the arm. It gives you a little more stability. When we go to two-handed, it actually forces the blade against your forearm even more. So as we're... Definitely a lot better, a lot easier to shoot with the brace than without. But my favorite way to shoot it is right here on the cheek. Again, getting it back here, not quite to the shoulder, but just bring it up. It's much easier. Of course, there's a lot of adapters for your AK and other pistols that you can put the brace on, uh, and so that really makes it nice. Uh, that's one of the reasons why, though, I started out with the AR, because originally the AK didn't have this. But Shockwave Technologies, this is a must for your pistol, I'll tell you guys. I want to thank Freedom Munitions for sending the 223, especially out of this. We're going to be using the drum. We're going to be using some 30-round magazines uh, and just having a little fun. Now at the range, there's definitely a little bit of difference between a rifle and a pistol. Uh, the balance of shooting an AR-15 is very solid. Um, you take the brace and you put it up next to your cheek. Uh, you know, if you're firing it that way, uh, it's definitely less of a stable platform. And so you know, you're putting it up next to your cheek, it's definitely riding there, but yet it's a great alternative uh, to the SBR because you have a short, small package and it's still a pistol. Now, when you're out at the range, you know, firing it from a bench, you can rest it on a rest and it really allows for good accuracy. We were shooting at 100 yards without any trouble. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't sight in my uh, MRO trip by Trigicon, and so we were having to really find the steel at one point. This is a 10 inch barrel and there is no reason why you can't hit you know, out to 200 yards very effectively in a man sized target. So even though it's a very small package, it can be very effective. Originally when I put this rifle together, I had a standard A2 bird cage and there is a lot more recoil coming back uh, with that. In fact, I bumped my nose a number of times on the charging handle. Uh, I did change it to one of the Wheaton Arms uh, Pro Brakes and that made a world of difference. In fact, I've got a video on it and uh, when I first realized how much this effectively tamed the recoil, especially out of a short barrel. Uh, so, you know, I definitely recommend that if you're going to get a small AR pistol, that if you put a compensator or a muzzle brake on there, it will definitely make a big difference. But you can see that we were shooting very easily without any trouble. Um, you know, whether it was against the cheek or even if it was out used as the way it was intended as a brace. Uh, against the inside of your arm, uh, even two-handed, it kind of rests on the inside of your arm, uh, and it keeps some of the fatigue down. But this is still a fairly heavy firearm to be firing with one hand. But the big thing is, taking one of these out to the range is just a lot of fun. It's light, it's handy, it's very maneuverable, and really the 5.56 caliber just lends itself to pretty soft recoil. But what we're going to do now is we're going to install it into our pistol. The first thing I'm going to do is slide my lower onto a, a magwell block. We're going to insert our buffer retaining spring and buffer retaining plug. Just get it set right into the receiver. Now take your pivot pin with the groove facing toward the stock and we're going to put it into the receiver. Making sure that groove remains toward the stock. There's a small little hole right here at the back of the receiver. Uh, take your uh, takedown pin 
and place it in. A spring goes in here, but we're gonna wait and put that in in just a second. And then we're gonna remove the castle nut and the back end plate. Now on the threads of the buffer tube, we're gonna put some of this uh, Aeroshell 33 lithium grease. And uh, we wanna, it really helps with the threads. You know, this aluminum, even though it's, they're both aluminum, uh, they're different properties and you need to, to have those threads uh, just dressed. And I'll have a link below where I get this. I get this from a guy on eBay. Um, it's a, I like these little vials. Now take your castle nut with the teeth facing outward and just go ahead and put it onto the buffer tube. We want to screw it on pretty good. Once you get it back far enough, you're ready to start. And next we're going to put our end plate on. Uh, there's a small groove right here and the notch in the end plate will mate with that. Make sure that the area that's raised is facing toward the receiver. We're going to go ahead and start with our buffer tube. And we're going to go until we feel resistance on the buffer retaining pin. And right there it is. And now the buffer tube is butting up next to your uh, buffer retaining pin. We're going to depress it down and then continue to turn. And there's a small lip that'll fit over it. We're going to go the second time around. Right there. And that'll hold it. If that little lip is not holding that in, this will fly off because it's got spring tension. And you need to be careful when we turn this to put the spring in for that not to come flying out. We're going to place our spring right here into that little hole. Then we're going to take a flathead screwdriver and we're going to push that in. Can be a little tricky. Then bring over your retainer plate and let it go. Now you're holding this spring in and we're going to push the retainer plate and hold pressure. Keeping pressure on the end plate, we're going to take our castle nut and we're going to tighten it down. Just get it hand tight for now. That should hold that into place. One thing you don't want to do is to bind that spring, it'll weaken it. Okay, now we're going to take our armorer's wrench and we're going to tighten down the castle nut. So I'm going to set it. It gets three of the teeth. Then we're going to take our torque wrench. We've got it set at 40 foot pounds. And now we're going to torque it down. Okay, so now we've got it installed. We're going to double check our takedown pin, make sure it's retained, and it is. Now all we need to do is to slide our stock over, making sure that screw is not in place. We can set this wherever we want to on here that'll meet with those small little divots in the bottom. Now you want to remove your screw. Uh, I would advise putting a little bit of Loctite on here, but find the divot and line it up through the top and then you can replace your screw. We're taking a 530 seconds hex wrench. We're just going to tighten it down. You can set this wherever you want to and then of course you can change that if you don't like where it is. That's good and firm. Now we're going to insert our spring in our buffer. Uh, one thing I like to do is to put some grease on my buffer spring. This helps to kind of quieten down the noise a little bit. Uh, this buffer spring particularly has kind of an anodized finish so it seems pretty dry. And if you want to know what kind of grease this is, I have no idea. <laughs> now we're going to return our spring and buffer. And we're good to go. Now we're going to set in our upper receiver. Go ahead and check for function. And I think we're ready for the range. Guys, here it is in the finished configuration. Uh, and I want to go over a few things because a lot of people ask questions. Uh, it's one of the things I try to do is during the videos answer as many questions on video uh, because I can't get to all the comments below. Other than the Shockwave Technology Blade and the CAC Industry Tube, we have a Magpul. This is the Mo Plus and it has the rubberized coating. And of course, I've got a Magpul 30 rounder. The D60 drum is just, it just makes this like a bulldog. <laughs> That's just the way I feel when I put this thing on. Uh, but it's a lot more maneuverable with the 30 round magazines. Now the optic is one of the Trigicon MROs. It's a red dot. Uh, it has a number of different settings in here, even night vision settings. Uh, this is a super rugged scope. I love these. Uh, and then we have the kinetic side lock mount. And this is a 
you just a little lever you push it in and then you can pull the sight right off this mount is super easy to take on and off it retains zero as well uh, and so once you get it back on you take it and push it and the thing comes back out and it's rock solid uh, this is really cool i got this from optics planet uh, they're the best source for optics uh, plus you can get a five percent discount using suit zero zero anytime you check out so it's great that those guys offer that uh, to the suits viewers of course one of my all-time favorites the bcm gunfighter charging handle and uh, these things are excellent there's a lot of configurations but these go on all my rifles here at the front i have a wheaton arms pro comp Having a good compensator on your pistol will really make things a lot nicer. <laughs> These things can rock you because of that short barrel, and plus because you're not putting this on your shoulder. Uh, now the handguard, and I got some questions on Instagram and Facebook about this handguard, uh, and actually some you know negative comments saying there's no place to put sights on it. This is one of the dullest quick detach mounts. Now this is one of the older ones. I got this from Copper Custom. Tim over at Military Arms Channel sent it to me. Um, and I've really enjoyed shooting it. The one thing, though, that uh, it's they've got a new model now that's a lot better. Uh, this is the very original. And all you do is, is turn it, and you can pull your barrel right out. Uh, so it's a quick detach system, and it makes it easy to make it very compact. Put it back on, bring it down, and lock it down. Uh, one of the problems though is that this inadvertently can turn a little bit, so I'm going to be changing this out. Now again, Tim at Cop Copper Custom, they've changed the configuration, it's a much better system. But this is one thing that it's really handy and I love it that you can actually break this down into an even smaller package. And guys, if you're looking for a drum magazine but you just don't know if they're reliable or not, the D60 drum by Magpul is the deal. <laughs> I mean, it is awesome. Uh, it's the same height as your standard 30 round magazine. It is wider, but you've got 60 rounds right at your hand, at your fingertips. In fact, my home defense AR-15 has one of these in it, and then I have some extra 30 round magazines next to it. Uh, so that gives you a lot of power right up front. Uh, I got this from GunMagWarehouse.com. Those guys are great to deal with. And I've gotten a number of different type magazines from them. And, I, and they actually sent this drum uh, as a request. And so I want to thank them. But check out GunMagWarehouse.com if you're looking for magazines. They're always running some really cool deals. And of course, the letter from the ATF that says that the blade is legal is really cool to have in your range bag. So, you know, just keep that handy just in case you ever have any little issues. And one great advantage of the Shockwaves Technologies blade is it runs around $50 and less. Uh, I've seen them down to about 42 bucks. The SIG arm braces, even the Gen 2, the new upgraded one, is still about $100. So you can pick up two of your Shockwave blades for the same price as you can get one of these. Of course, this is twice as large. <laughs> Now the CAC buffer tube assembly, and that includes the spring, the buffer, the castle nut, the end plate, and the buffer tube, uh, they run about $30 on the skidtactical.com website. That's where I actually ordered this from. And I'll have a list down below and links to where you can find all this stuff if that's what you're looking for. Of course, there's a lot of great options out there. And if you're looking for the Shockwave Technologies uh, blade, they are at Primary Arms. Uh, and again, I'll have the links down below. And they also carry the CAC uh, tubes and kits. You can get this in a whole kit if that's what you're looking for or you can just go straight with the blade to fit on an existing pistol buffer tube. But remember it needs to be no larger than 1.25 inches in diameter. And check out Skinny Medic's YouTube channel. Uh, he does a lot of medical trauma type stuff. He's been a paramedic for about 14 years and uh, has medical outfitters which is a great source for all kind of medical gear. And guys, if you're doing a lot of shooting, you need a trauma kit. Don't shoulder it. <laughs> Don't shoulder! Don't shoulder! <laughs> now guys, having an AR pistol, it's light, handy, it's a lot of fun at the range. It's just such a small package. And the only thing you really have to be worried about, beside the cost of your ammo, because you'll shoot up a lot of it, is putting that thing on your shoulder. So. Don't put it on your shoulder, at least while anybody's watching. <laughs> no, I'm not endorsing putting that on your shoulder. <laughs> be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic.
because it constitutes an F SBR. Especially for guys that don't want to go of the AR-15 pistol and all the trouble at prosecution under FNA uh, pivot pin. Oh, a takedown pin. And I think we're ready for the range. Oops. It's no touchy. Eh, eh, eh. Don't touch, no touching. No touching. As long as it's not touching, it's not touching. 